I waited all day yesterday to get my AirPods Pro. I did finally get them, but man, was that UPS guy late? Totally would have done a more formal unboxing, but the fact that they delivered them so late in the day meant that I had to do just a quick little live one. Anyway, today I'll be going over my first impressions. This is not a full review. This is just immediate impulse reactions to having the AirPods Pro for less than 24 hours and giving you my feedback on them. All right, let's begin. Now, in the past, Apple has changed their earbud designs. Usually not very much, though. I mean, even from the wired earpods to the flexing-capable AirPods, the overall design shape of the bud really hadn't changed very much. And I feel like with AirPods Pro, Apple was kind of directly trying to address a lot of people's concerns with AirPods. What were some common criticisms they got for those buds? Not enough noise cancellation. There's no passive, there's no active noise cancellation of any kind, so if you have really lousy neighbors, or you're on a plane, AirPods were just not great for those situations. There were also a lot of people bringing up that AirPods did not fit in their ear very well. And it seems like with the adoption of the rubber tips on the AirPods Pro, that criticism has for the most part gone away. I've seen a few people that say they don't really fit in their ears very well or they're uncomfortable, but for the most part, I've seen a lot of people that used to not be able to wear AirPods now wear AirPods Pro and say they fit much more comfortably. And they've even made the stem a lot shorter, which makes things easier like keeping on your headphones while putting on a shirt or shaving as John Morrison has gratefully showed us how to do. But I'll be totally honest with you guys. You know how biased towards Apple I am. When I tried these on for the first time and started playing music, I did not think they sounded very good. And I thought I was crazy or maybe I had defective ears, but I first put them in and I was like, these feel like they're lacking in bass quite a bit. I changed the ear cups around a little bit to see if that made a difference. And what I realized was dependent on how I put them in or how long I had had them in my ear, I kind of noticed different experiences. So this morning I was doing some heavy duty AirPod testing. Yes, this is my job. I was switching back and forth between the AirPods 2 and my AirPods Pro and I was trying to see if I could notice any audible difference. And it's there. They definitely sound different but it's not the same night and day difference that it was transitioning from the circular earbuds to the design we used to have. Those two were like objectively bad and objectively better. It was more comfortable. They sounded better. Switching to those new generation ear pods was like a no-brainer and it was so much vastly better than what the circular earbuds were before. With these, it's kind of a toss-up. There would be certain instances where I would listen to a very bass-heavy song and it would feel like the AirPods Pro were lacking in depth and quality compared to my last-gen AirPods, which is kind of frustrating because these are supposed to have the adaptive EQ and everything. So I was very frustrated by this, but then once I started listening to other types of acoustical music, I felt like I was getting more detailed than I was on the AirPods. So I can definitely agree that AirPods Pro are probably giving you more intricate sound, giving you more of those mids and highs that you normally can't really make out with a normal pair of AirPods. So I could see a lot of people liking that, and it makes sense because there were quite a few people online telling me that AirPods Pro sound better. But then I would go back to another bass-heavy song, like the Winnie the Pooh soundtrack, and I would start hearing a much more prominent amount of bass. So I don't know if this is a software glitch or something, or maybe my ears just weren't broken in yet for the new AirPods design and they just took some getting used to. But at first, while they felt kind of lackluster in bass, they eventually started making up for it. And after wearing them for about an hour or two, then I started thinking, okay, these do sound better than the original AirPods. So I'm probably just crazy. I mean, even active noise cancellation can't cut out the voices you hear in your head. But after switching back and forth for a while, I did start to enjoy the AirPods Pro sound quality more, but I do just find it bizarre that in my early stages of testing, I was almost a bigger fan of the original AirPods compressed, lackluster, simple audio quality compared to the intricate version of the AirPods Pro. Maybe it was the adaptive EQ messing up and it was trying to lower bass when it shouldn't or something like that. I have no idea, but for now, these are definitely better in sound quality, but that's not the main reason to get AirPods Pro. The main reason is, of course, noise cancellation. And I was very interested to trying this out in one of the best situations I've tested it in so far was I was outside with a group of friends. They were flying one of their RC planes. It was very windy. It was next to a parking lot. There were a lot of cars driving by. I put them in and as soon as I activated noise cancellation, everything fell 
silent. Almost in a terrifying way, like that time in a horror movie where it gets really, really quiet right before the jump scare. I was like, I am in danger. It was so dang quiet, you could hear a kitten fart across the room, probably. And I was impressed by this. I mean, I've used active noise cancellation headphones in the past, and I think it's probably just semantics to try to compare these to other ones out there and say they're either worse or better than your Bose active noise cancellation. Like I always bring up in all my headphone reviews, I'm not an audiophile. I'm a very average headphone user. I listen to the built-in speakers on my iMac Pro because they sound fine to me. And when it came to noise cancellation, they were just as good as anyone could imagine them to be. I have not taken them on a plane yet, but I imagine they would cancel out the jet engine noise very, very well. And out of all noise cancellation headphones out there, I've never seen an easier system of just being able to hold that little pressure sensitive stem to turn it off. And when I did that to activate transparency mode, it suddenly felt like the earbuds weren't even in my ear anymore. I could hear everything around around me just as good as my normal ear can hear it, then you could probably tell a little bit that it's being picked up by microphones if you're paying close attention to it, but it honestly felt like nothing was in my ear with transparency mode, which I guess is the goal. If you want to prioritize battery life, you can just turn it off and keep them in the middle, but <laughs> screw that. I need active noise cancellation to cancel out all the kids that are going to be knocking on my door tonight asking for candy. I'll probably just give them my old AirPods because those are practically junk now. Kids can go play with them in the street. Don't need them though. Not edible, still. But I do have a couple of trips in the future that I'll be flying for, so that's why I'm definitely going to be keeping the AirPods Pro, unlike Apple Watch Series 5, iPhone 11, things I buy just to check out and have review purposes for, but not necessarily to keep for myself. These, I will be keeping for myself. I haven't had a prolonged FaceTime conversation with them yet, so I've yet to test the microphone quality, hoping it's good. And I'm hoping everybody out there is enjoying their AirPods Pro as well, while while the battery case is slightly chunkier than it was in the past, it does still fit in the mini pocket that was specifically designed for the iPod Shuffle. Back when they started adding it to jeans in 1918, companies were saying one day AirPods Pro will exist, so we start need to making little pockets in our pockets. And luckily, those people who have been making jeans that way for decades finally have a reason for those little pockets. I kinda am not as big a fan though as the enlarged lid. Something was a bit more satisfying about the old generation AirPods where you could open them with one hand and one finger and it was kind of like a lighter. This you can open with one hand but it's just not as, I don't know, simple and also the process of dropping the AirPods into the charge case isn't as easy to do as before. Like with old AirPods there was really like only one way for these things to go in. You just drop them, they click in place and then you close the thing with just gravity. With these though there's been a few situations where I drop them in the case and they're kind of hanging out a little bit so you have to push it in again. You can still close it with inertia, I guess, but old AirPods probably clicked in a little bit better. And I know this isn't the full review yet, but I also have to say audio quality between the two is still like pretty minor. I mean, the AirPods Pro definitely give you some more clarity, but if you don't have $250 to spend on new wireless earbuds, I'm not really going to recommend everybody just run out and definitely get AirPods Pro. If you have first generation ones that are working fine, I'm personally going to say kind of stick with them. Like sure, they don't have great noise cancellation, but but if they fit in your ears okay and everything, when you're listening to audio on AirPods above 50%, you have a hard time hearing your surroundings anyway. Noise cancellation makes a much smaller impact when you're listening to music at higher volumes, at least in my experience. Maybe some of you out there are diehard noise cancellation fans, but to me at least, like, I can't hear what's going on around me as soon as I turn up the volume a little bit higher anyway. So they're cool features. I'm glad they added them. I'm happy they finally updated the AirPods in some way, but don't feel like they're a must to buy. I think some people out there were acting like everyone should try them or everyone needs to go out and get them and 250 bucks, it's a lot for earbuds, particularly for something that probably is going to go bad after a few years of use when the tiny batteries in these things start losing their capacity and when it's something so small and tiny that it's very easy to lose or drop down a storm drain or leave in an Uber. So if you want them, great, but be careful, okay? Be cautious. This is a lot of expensive tech to keep in such a small, compact design. It's gonna cost you like 90 bucks just to replace one of these buds if you lose them. So be careful, folks.
Don't be so careless. However, if you consider the fact that these do have the white rubber tips, which when they go in your ear collects earwax, that means you do not have to spend so much money on Q-tips anymore. Basically, throw all your Q-tips out because these things are going to be cleaning your ears from here on out. And as we all know, the average American spends about $13,000 a year on Q-tips. So if you factor that into the longevity, AirPods Pro should be making you well over 12 grand a year. These statistics are all completely factual. Anyways, this is your Apple Sheep here, and Q-tips are now obsolete. Thanks, Apple. Bye-bye.